Hey, happy Monday, February 26th, 2024. Welcome to Elijah Streams. Uh, we are just a, about a month and a half shy of being 27 years, bringing you the voice of the prophets. We're in year 26 and uh, having a good time doing it. We're going to bring Johnny Enlow on in just a few minutes. A quick reminder that tomorrow's show is Dr. Jan. Dr. Jan Halper Hayes, he always has the pulse of what's going on and but she's also there to feel, get the pulse and, and give it to the powers that be. President Trump strongly endorsed her uh, last year sometime, and she went immediately viral and has been that way ever since. So she's a voice not crying in the wilderness. She's a voice everyone's listening to. And so I do not want you to miss Dr. Jan tomorrow. So now I'm really excited to before we bring um, Johnny Enlow on. We, we've got another story that's finished and edited. It's shot and edited. And uh, before, I'm going to not tell you the contents of it because it's very self-explanatory. I just want to say this, that it's so exciting to see you you trust us when you donate to give very carefully to the pe to the right people that, that God directs us to. Then we do that with our best efforts. And then we see like a story like this, you'll see once again the timing of God how God intervened through um, through the using use of your gift to help these people um, in this situation. So without further delay, here's that story. Oh, man, <laughs> I already saw this last night when it was done, and um, I think it was last night, and it was actually even more impactful to see it again. It's just such an amazing thing. You, the viewers, did this. You trusted us with uh, your investment into this ministry. And we're very careful with where we put it. And look at how God at the right time, exactly the right time. And look at all the inner working parts where she decided that she needed to obey God in that area with those coffee cups. That's an amazing story. That's going to preach to a lot of people watching this. Um, that's an amazing thing. You know, and that's kind of a real thing. If you are frequenting that place, knowing how they, how they uh, look at abortion, there is something there that maybe you ought to consider not doing that. So, I mean, everybody gets to be, you know, their own person in that, no judgment, but that's an amazing testimony of what she did there. And right on the heels of that, amazing. All right, well, very, very exciting. So, all right, time to bring in Johnny Enlow. So here's Johnny. Hey, Johnny, amazing story, huh? Wow, that was amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, run amazing. out of superlatives for that one. Yeah, there's so much. So I, I'm actually undone by watching it the second time, and I'd already seen it, you know. Uh, but to see what God weaved together, you know, and if we had seen all the different thought processes that went into the people who were giving, you know, at the moment they decided to trust us and give. And so, anyway, it's just whew, look at all the look at all the life that's going to come from that saved life. So, no, you're proving to them over and over that you're doing. Uh, Elijah streams everything Elijah's doing an amazing job of stewarding their gifts and it's so really good. going to and, and one last thing and then I'm going to turn it right over to you uh, the decision was made just this morning we'd been talking about it that as of March 1st and we're going to go from doing 10 fresh water wells a month in Uganda to 15 water wells a month uh, so that's a real crank up. That's what is that? Another 50%. Yeah. Uh, and we were, we were there in Uganda. We talked with them about it there and they said, I think we can crank it up to that. Uh, and she's actually looking the um, rank and lawyer looking to the time when we can make it one fresh water well a day. So we're looking at that coming right. <laughs> it's kind of exciting, really. Yeah, that is exciting. So uh, you've got a lot on your plate today, and I'm just going to turn it over because it's self-explanatory what your subject is going to be. So, Yeah, thank you, Steve. Well, so we're going to talk about um, something that's drawn a bit of attention to me over the last week, and it ties in with Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the state of Alabama and a ruling he made. And so um, we suddenly made some national attention, and so NBC asked me for um, you know, a quote or more on, on, on it all. And so we'll explain that to you in a moment. And then, uh, you know, I have a title for today of, uh, my justice will now go from trickle to cascade or something similar to that. Yeah. And that will be, I have a, 
I, I don't do this very often at all, but I have a, a little prophetic word that it's as if I'm taking dictation from uh, from the Lord. And so I've written that. And so we'll be uh, reading that to you uh, moving forward. Interestingly, we're on this theme of justice and life as well. Uh, kind of is only appropriate in light of where we started uh, with what what you what you just shared there, Steve. And um, and so um, I just want everyone to be aware. That's the direction I'm looking at my notes here. The direction we're gonna um, uh, go with, and there's an aspect of the Lord um, telling us, explaining how 2024. There are aspects of it that are a repeat of 2020 and they're not like god trying again repeat but it's god finishing something he started in 2020 and certain situations and individuals that have been given were given a chance essentially the deep state was given a chance in 2020 to bow much like pharaoh was mm. um after one or two or three or four or five plagues there was an opportunity. He, he wasn't obligated to, you know, have to experience the worst, the number 10 plague um, and the loss of firstborn. He wasn't obligated. He could have um, bowed his knee and say, OK, I surrender. I get it. I'm not going to win this. And there is a hardening of the heart that's taken place. We'll just call them the cabal, the deep state. And so <clears throat> things that they were given a first opportunity in 2020 to give in and it not be so horrendous and so damaging for them. Um, it's that has passed. And so mm. now we're uh, at a similar, similar stage. We're going to um, address that in just a moment. So here's the situation. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, justice uh, chief justice, Tom Parker of the state of Alabama and, excuse me, we did an interview on our program. We have someone you should know. And um, uh, we connected from, oh, there we go. We connected from two or three uh, years ago. So that's Justice, Chief Justice of the state of Alabama, Thomas Parker. And um, he is he's 72 years old now. And he has an amazing history. I keep him up just for a second of, you know, contending for life. And he was really some say instrumental in in legal wins rulings on behalf of overturning Roe versus Wade things that he worked on from 2012 2014 and the ruling that came out in Mississippi that the Supreme Court justices of our nation referred to and so some writing on him say like he he won uh, and set the table really for where it only made legal sense for Roe v Wade to be overturned so he's been working on that for a long time. We didn't actually talk on this subject because uh, there had not yet been the voting, the ruling of the Supreme Court of the state of Alabama, but the Supreme Court of the state of Alabama just ruled, I guess last week, eight to one um, on a matter having to do with IVF, in vitro fertilization. And essentially, um, we'll say the, the legal legwork was done by Chief Justice Parker and um, we'll just call him Justice Parker at this at this uh, from here on. And Justice Parker, um, basically, he proved his point. And, and uh, you know, they overturned a previous ruling that um, had to do with um, see if I get this part of the story right. There was uh, clinic care of you know, for those who understand the in vitro fertilization processes where. Uh, eggs outside the womb are fertilized, and it's usually, you know, it has to do with couples that can't, um, that can't get pregnant in the normal way. And so there is often, um, um, I guess, multiple eggs that are fertilized. And, um, and the, the standard practice, I guess, or semi-standard practice is, you know, you do several of them, hoping one will mm. be, uh, will, will bear out at least and survive. And well, the ruling says that a fertilized embryo is life, is a life, and it just kind of changes everything. So the whole nation uh, that's paying attention to that theme is a little bit rocked, and that's why there's a lot of attention to it. So they wanted to see right after the ruling um, where he where he had just been, and it 
totally unplanned by us, but the same day we put it up on our Restore 7 platform is the same day the ruling came out. Really? Wow. So yeah. it drew a lot of attention to both of us. And so on the program, he was, you know, uh, Justice Parker was saying, thanking me and us for our work with the Seven Mountains, the Seven Mountain Mandate. And so um, all of a sudden it brought attention to that. And so now, you know, whether it's ABC, CBS, NBC, CNNBC, Huffington Post and Media Matters and everybody they send it to, um, there's some variation. If you look at it, you'll see, you know, I'll either be called the. Um, um, and so um, or uh, the Seven Mountain guy, you know, and and. Um, so let's see. We'll just I'm, they're, they're helping me out there during an <laughs> online broadcast hosted by they call me Tennessee evangelist. Johnny and again, I'm an, I'm an evangelist. I don't know why, you know, I don't carry uh, titles, but I don't know if that's them trying not to have me there listed um, prophetic voice or something. Author evangelist. It's like, OK, evangelist. Parker just <laughs> suggested America was founded explicitly as a Christian nation, discussed his embrace of the Seven Mountains mandate. The belief that conservative Christians are meant to rule over seven key areas of American life, including media, business, education, government. Mind you, those reading this, this is not our words. This is their words. And this is what we had to speak and answer to. So I'll go ahead and and I'll. Um, so what was it? Thursday, they um, they sent me a request through, uh, you know, it went not directly through me, but through the way you get to me. Um, and, and sending an email to restore seven and it's, um, I'm a reporter for NBC news working on a story about comments to you by justice, Tom Parker, first reported by media matters, indicating his support for the seven mountains mandate, which says Christians are called on to control seven key spheres of public life. Some experts who study this theology say it is an anti-democratic worldview that seeks to impose fundamentalist Christian views on others. Oh, all the right buzzwords, right? Yes, all the yes. buzz I'm reaching out to ask if you'd like to comment. And then below that, they actually were giving me till four. So I had about three hours and I decided, yeah, let's do this. So you can put my, go ahead and put my response. I think this is important for all of you, uh, not just as it relates to this case, but for us to understand that there is increased attention on how we word what the seven mountain mandate is. And so I wanted people to see even uh, what I consider a, a, a response that um, really can't be argued with. Uh, well, you can argue with anything. But I'll just read it. The seven mountain mandate is decidedly not, this is my answer, to control seven key spheres of public life in an impositional way. I have made that very clear in my writings and my messages the Holy Inquisition era is nothing we want to go back to. Jesus didn't come throwing thunderbolts, demanding submission, and neither do we. His kingdom is never advanced through imposition. Leave that up just while I, um, let's see where I have this. I had this, one of my book on it right in front of me. Well, I, well what do you know? I had it right on in front of me. Here it is. <laughs> So the book um, uh, over here is Seven Mountain Renaissance, which vision and strategy through 2050 this was written in 2015. And I specifically have a chapter because there is a whole lumping in with uh, I am also in some of these news outlets called an uh, NAR um, spokesperson. And these are the ones that believe they're supposed to take over the world. <clears throat> well, and I happen to have the. Uh, uh, the the name of a chapter, well, let's see, let's put it right here, is it's about influence, not domination. Now, those are my notes because I, I preached out of my book in a couple of different places, but influence, not domination. And so I, I, uh, I made it clear in the chapter that any kind of impositional thinking is wrong, is not kingdom. The kingdom of God is never advanced through imposition. Jesus did not come throwing thunderbolts and demanding 
acquiescence to everything he wanted because he's the king of the world, the king of the universe, which he could have, and therefore bow down. And uh, so, uh, and I made it clear, I have underlined, having dominion is not about Christians ruling over non-Christians. Now back to the quote here. Okay. So, his kingdom is never advanced through imposition. This right halfway down. However, replace the word control with the word influence because they said our mandate was to control the world. I said, no, mm. replace the word control with the word influence. And you have what Jesus asks of us in being salt and light. It is not sinister to desire a voice and relevance in political matters. And I'm pretty sure that is why every citizen becoming active in society, engaging society, and they're trying to make it sound sinister, the fact that we finally wake up the citizenship. Anyway, so here it is. I said, is the takeaway regarding Justice Parker apparently that only Christians are not welcome to express citizenship? Hopefully not. I'm pretty sure that goes against the very we the people foundations of our country. The Seven Mountain Mandate seeks only to correct the passive irrelevance brought on by Christians' unhealthy obsession with the rapture, which had them largely abandon societal input based on a perceived soon return of Jesus. Finally, participating, oh, finally, participating in the healing of society should be embraced. So since I gave him a quote, of course, I knew they wouldn't put everything and they kind of limited it to um, we're a part of trying to heal society and there's nothing sinister with us trying to be citizens as well. That's fine. We, I, I knew if there was any line that was either kind of weak or anything they could pick on, that's what they would release in the, in the report. Um, but they did put it, and I don't have that one here. That can be fun. That might be on our, uh, on our Facebook too. As I'm not sure. I think, I, I think so. So anyway, um, because there's a lot of attention now, most of you probably have no idea that this is so all of a sudden this showed up on um ABC News and NBC and every Media Matters is actually a parent company. Um, you know, they're by them. They're even by themselves referred to as a liberal watchdog group. Mm. So if Media Matters is a liberal watchdog group, you have to understand this is like from a, a standpoint of warfare um, and and warring for hearts and minds of society. This is their F-15 they're mm. sending out. Everybody that's under Media Matters, this umbrella company that at 4 a.m. every morning, I think they still do, they release the, the news to everybody. And so there's a massive echo echo chamber. And so you're going to hear uh, there's probably a hundred different um, sites that will have me as the, the, the versus uh, or the um, Seven Mountain NAR guy or something like that. So perhaps, you know, there might be none of you that was going to see it anyway because their influence is greatly diminished and what would be considered mainstream media is is um, not to be insulting, but it's a lot like lamestream media that's taking place and their voice is limited. But in case you have seen it or perhaps um, the people, friends and relatives that are, are still, uh, we'll say, under the um the spell of lying media they could be ones that that, that uh, know about it and talk to you about it so it's worth bringing up because i think um uh, there's a couple things one on the ruling um and and steve i was having just a brief conversation with you ahead of time and and telling you uh, and i don't know if i just mentioned it here now i, I will tell everyone that justice parker has a history he was the assistant district attorney no, uh, yeah. assistant attorney general for the state of Alabama under Jeff Sessions, for those who remember that name, who was the attorney general under Trump for the nation. And then he was actually, um, he came after right after Roy Moore, um, who was well known um, as well in um, nationally because of his defense of the tw uh, Ten Commandments and different things that happened there. So, there's something about the state of Alabama and their legal courts and, and, and their impact on the nation. There's kind of just in the spirit realm, something is going on there and it's just a, a good thing. And so we have someone willing to stand up strong. So president Trump, again, based on this, 
um, ruling that came out of Alabama, because Alabama, what the media is trying to say is you have uh, a chief justice that is trying to shut down IVF. They, if they don't directly say that, they're implying that, but that's not what he's trying to do at all. He's trying to say life is life. And, and life is life. Um, if we understand, he hasn't said this to me. I'm not putting, um, I'm not sharing any battle strategy he might or might not have in this. I'm just my own observations, the importance of, of finding some uh, ruling foundations um, for case history. You now have a state that voted eight to one. Its Supreme Court voted eight to one, um, overturning a previous ruling that had to do with uh, a situation where the embryos were not cared for properly from uh, a couple. And so four of them, four or five of them were uh, lost. There's legal accountability brought into them for not taking care of what is human life. So, um, you know, the initial report of panic was we're having to shut down. We're not doing any more IVFs right now until we consider the legal consequences of this ruling. And it's fine. I'm just going to say, um, yes, and President Trump was like, well, we don't want to discourage couples that want to have baby, all, all babies and life is good and, and it's true and it's true and it's true. Um, but it doesn't hurt to slow down just a moment and make sure this is all done right and well. And, and I can you can just kind of even use your logic to understand the ramifications of this moving forward is that. Uh, if, to say it again, if, uh, here's, the, I'm getting the quote, decision on fertilized, there's a decision on fertilized embryos that they are people. Fertilized embryos are people. And so, because there had been, there's been this it's conception. It's conception, right? To use the word, it's conception. It's conception. So there had been some saying part of the arguments pro and con Roe v. Wade go with to do with a womb, that if an embryo is in a womb, it's, uh, it, the fact that there is a womb is what makes it life. And then so therefore the owner of the womb has rights over that life to extinguish it or not. So a pro-abortion right is that as the womb holder, you have rights. But if, uh, if his ruling, if you stay consistent and logical with it, that, um, if life in a tube is a person, then life in a womb is a person. Wow. And, and it's so, like going backwards, proving it backwards. It, I don't even know whatever term to use. You go to, yeah, it's, I don't even know how to describe it, but wow. Well, and, and you all see that. So, you know, he who owns the test tube, he or she who owns the test tube may not destroy the embryo just because they own the test tube, nor the owner of the clinic of the test tube has right to destroy because in the ruling, which again, they're, uh, they're, you know, they are really coming after Justice Parker is because he said, you face the anger of a holy God if you mess with life that's in his image. And so he added a whole wow. Jeremiah component in there as well. Can, can I ask you one clarification on that point? Yes. Am I stretching this or is this what's being decided or has been decided? If a person who is totally pro-life, but they had to use IVF in, in vitro fertilization, if they have, they, they have frozen like three different, now and, what's considered life, and the first one takes, and they don't want to do any more, are they fa faced with the ethical dilemma of now what? because they can't really destroy it now? There is an ethical dilemma. So you have several ways to, and those are the things that have to be processed yeah. through. One is you can't have these on standby in case the other one doesn't work. So you just like, you really, you, you have to just go for one um, um, and extract one and go for one. Um, and I don't want to act like I know more than I do on this, but there are some questions that have to be asked, but we already know they're doing things as adopting out in vitro. So I think part of what it means is just almost like babies in the womb. You have to be willing for them to be adopted by someone else. You can't just discard life. And so um, 
you know, I know part of this is shocking for Christians who had thought that, well, it's not really life because it's like if it's in a test tube, it's not. And and I hadn't really thought heavily about that until the judge pointed out that, you know, once um, once there's been the spark of life and they literally see a light that comes into it, God has now, you know, his image is now imprinted in it and it's now it's now something a son or daughter of his that's there. And so wow. there has to be a respect of life. So the, the ruling is we have to respect life. Yeah. And he didn't make that statement. I'm just saying it's just a logical, it's yes. just a logical thing. Yeah. Wow. And so they're going to try to um, attack him and say, um, say he's saying things he's not, but I didn't have the, that was not our theme on our program. So, um, I, I heard nothing from him that made it sound like he wanted IVFs to be stopped. That's not his point. His point is, man, he values life. He has a history, yeah. long time, decades, working with and believing in the sanctity of life. Well, and and that, Johnny, that's what's the, defending. This is like a huge ethics thing that needs to, people need to come to grips with because the Christian community who are pro-life have said, for decades now, life begins at conception. But nobody handled the fact that there's all these conceptions sitting frozen in test tubes. Wow. That conception is happening outside the womb is yeah. the, the new deal. So, yeah. So the ramifications, you know, for, I'll say it again. Fertilized embryos are people. You can't experiment with them as if they are matter or animals. So... Um, that, that has ramifications, uh, more of that going on than people know, uh, more sinister stuff going in there, but you can't say, well, we're just doing it with these embryos in, in a tube because it's like with this ruling, uh, if again, if it were to go national in some kind of way, um, it is now saying you, you cannot act like you have the freedom to do any kind of new gene dna splicing you you have to treat it with the same law dignity that you have to treat a human that's been uh categorized as such in the womb so anyway it's um so let me just look at what else i'm saying um yeah life is not defined by womb anymore that changes a lot of legal argumentation um uh, on both sides um, again, Roe v. Wade's already been overturned, so we're not going to uh, go into that as well. But there are now the states are having they're having their own right to overturn it internally, and some states are doing that in different ways, and already making these declarations that you can do abortion. Well, all of a sudden you have two legal rulings that are about to hit smack into each other here and cause. Um, um, you know, an op another opportunity for life to be uh, treated yeah. in a more in a more special way. So, um, and, uh, let me see if I, I broke down a couple. Yeah, if an owner of a test tube would be the logic of it. I'm not saying this is not me speaking on behalf of uh, of Judge Justice Parker. Yeah. We haven't had a conversation on those type of repercussions, but ramifications. I I, I I see that that's what's going on. Anyway, um, wanted people to be aware that that's going on, but it's brought more attention uh, both to the the life topic. It's brought attention because he, um, uh, again, spoke positively on seven mountains. And, and then um, uh, I'll just briefly on seven mountains and the QAnon conspiracy thing. Seeing it's only appropriate, you're having a Dr. Jan Halper Hayes tomorrow, and that's fun. I've liked um, her yeah. every time her being there, and the audience is clearly huge, huge audience for what she's yeah. saying. And we we had attention drawn to her by President Trump when she it wasn't that few months ago, while she's um, interviewing in Europe, particularly yeah. in England, and she's telling all the cute conspiracy theories. Uh, whether, you know, just listen, go back to listen to her, that very first one. And one she's talked about even in her last program and even in her first program with you, Steve. And so it's interesting that they're still trying to call these Q conspiracy theories 
And there's literally not one, in quote, Q conspiracy theory from four years ago that can be disproved at this point. And she said some pretty explosive, she has said some pretty explosive things that Trump has already done behind the scenes and what they've discovered. She may not have covered all the matters having to do with, um, I'm not sure if she has, that things that have already been proven that they've been uh, taking place, the Russian collusion, the Russia, Russia, Russia thing was fabrication and all kinds of things. So um, there's a revisiting of topic, but you know she brought those things up and then Trump put on his Truth Social and all his tweets, I don't know where they all came and went, but it was like, everybody needs to listen to this. Hmm. And the media won't uh, specifically ask her questions on, on some of the very explosive things such as 650 plane loads of treasure and gold being removed from the Vatican as President Trump went there and said, we want our money back. And I can I just point this one thing out. Hold that thought is that when she said that publicly on that British TV and said there were 650 planes for taking our gold back from the Vatican, she said, that's the interview that Trump said people needed to listen to this of us. Anyone have any question? If Trump agreed with that, that should remove it. That's when she went viral. So just, I just want to point that out. And she, in that same interview, said, you know, 2015, the military made a decision that all our systems had been corrupted. And again, the media arm is the key for all of it. And that the military would have to step in. And so she tells a plan and that we ceased being a republic in 1871. These are all conspiracy theory, theorist thing. And guess what? The media... Um, neither, it was the funniest thing we commented on it to each other, Steve, is like the interviewer in, in Europe and in England, he's asking, he does no follow-up. He does, no, he <laughs> yeah. didn't do like, are you saying that those 650 <laughs> planes and where are, you know, he, he wanted to move on just as quickly <laughs> as possible. Yeah. And I'm just going to take advantage of, you know, we might have some new people watching this program, Steve. I was like, why didn't you all go ahead and ask those questions uh, of Jan Halper Hayes that President Trump himself said, hey, everybody needs to listen to this. And there are certain, you know, certain questions they do not want out there. And I do invite whoever is watching me for the first time, go ahead, listen to uh, all of our programs. And, and particularly those things connected, you'll hear from on Elijah's streams, Jan Halper Hayes. Derek Johnson, I don't know if some of you just don't know and you are you don't really know what's going on. And so you're just um, advancing what you're told you have to do. But yeah. anyway, there's, there's a whole, whole whole new reality there. So and then the idea of the, of the seven mountains and just the clarification, what we briefly shared in there, the seven mountains is about our right and our responsibility in the eyes of God. Jesus himself saying in his first message, you are the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. The salt is lost. It savors good for nothing but to be cast out, trampled upon. So that this has been the reality because the church um, bought into a premature rapture. Um, and, and that's only something that's really existed. If you go back 200 years ago, you, you'll find just not even the 1% trace of that around. But that is something that was planted into Christianity it was, I didn't know until the last year or two that tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent by the secret societies, by the Freemasonry, um, high, high levels, and by cabal individuals and people will say to put that into um, uh, seminaries, denominations, and for it to become the default standard um, doctrine of Christians that Jesus is coming and any moment. And so there is no sense in really trying to do anything. No sense being salt and light. Uh, I've mentioned before not to attack him, but famed Baptist teacher, J. Vernon McGee, he's like, there is no sense in polishing the brass on the Titanic. It's like, it's all going down. This is part of the plan that the plan is we lose and we sink. And so don't do things like try to improve society. 
don't try to show up. Don't try to let your voice be heard in politics, in government, in media, in anywhere. And so, um, again, this is just the media coming after us right now and trying to act like it's very sinister to think Seven Mountains is just them saying, hey, go back to your irrelevance when all you're doing is saying Jesus is about to return and you go to church on Sunday and you do what you do there. Praise, get free. We don't care. Have your own revival there. But don't be talking about bringing influence and about challenging yeah. darkness and dark agendas. So uh, there's a reason all this is is coming around uh, mm -hmm. again. There's a speaking of coming around. There's a part of everything happening right now just feels like a coming back around of 2020, and um, and like there's a a revisiting, and I'm going to uh, in, in, uh, speaking of that. So there's there's aspects of it like a do over year, and and I'm going to give the application. I'm going to ask those to get ready for that that screen. Uh, if you if you found it that had comparisons of 2020 and 2024 when I asked for it in just a second. But if you remember, um, and Pharaoh, you know, he did have the the option um, after the first plague. You know, the command was let my people go, Moses said. And this entire operation of the last several years, we called it a Passover operation from three, four five years ago. And it still is. And it's the fact that the average American is ninety thousand dollars in debt right now. I ought to tell you mm, wow. that, it's, um, that if the best country um, is is that, and we have the levels of hunger and everything else going on right now that have heavily heavily digressed. Uh, we'll say they've increased the numbers in the last two three years. Um, numbers crazy numbers that it's costing like twelve thousand more dollars. Uh, a year to feed ourselves a family of four, um, twelve thousand more dollars. That's huge. That's yeah. huge. It, That's it's like huge. Whatever income you are making, if you are barely making it, you need twelve thousand dollars more to make twelve thousand just to stay even. If you want to eat, it, right, right. And so, unfortunately, then those particularly middle lower income. Um, so what do you do? What's the cheapest food? The food that's worst for you. And um, and so and that's kind of a double hit. So then you have stuff that's harming you. And we now know, you know, all their all their products, all the whether you go white sugar, white bleach flour, everything, everything else, everything that's cheapest is uh, well, 90 percent of that, which is cheapest, is harmful for you in some way. And we're not going to draw all attention to that. But we're going to say well, one day we're going to look back at these great years um, and say when America and we, you know, it's because you have a nice car and you have a decent house and this and that. And the other. And, and so this this is a, a similar dynamic from those days. The, the Pharaoh was ruling. There's, you know, the whip and you will work. And they had to work all day. And they sweated it hard and worked all day. And that was just barely. Well, you have people. Uh, again, except for the at the very top of the of, of the food chain, we'll say um, working 40 to 60 hours a week. And the whip is the, the IRS or whatever yeah. else, you know, you just in order to keep up, um, you're having having to do so. So we're being taken into a, a freedom. And so these who have been the oppressors are being removed. That's what the Lord has been saying for years. I'm removing the mafia. What is the mafia? It's Pharaoh-like um, and Babylon-like in their religion and their worship of Lucifer, um, and often through Molech, Baal, different ways. And so these are being, they're being removed. The Lord is removing them. And much as in that day, we don't really know how long the whole process of the 10 plagues took place. But yeah, we Pharaoh, do, yeah. no. Uh, Pharaoh could have uh, could have let him go after the first time, but it was like he had just multiple rounds. Well, there's something about 2024 and justice has really hit the next level of crescendo. It's funny. The Lord speaks to me. You all um, know we have four daughters and uh, my second daughter. Her name is Justice and um, Justice Hope. And she just turned this last week. The same time all this stuff is going with Justice Parker. Uh, justice turned 30. 30 is the number of maturity. Hmm. And 
same days, her her firstborn Caleb uh, turned one year old. Wow. Well, the same last week, she's also uh, basically just getting into launching her book, um, feminist um, from feminist to femi feminism. I mean, from feminist to from femi femin yeah, for, okay. from feminist to feminist. <laughs> and uh, she was on with uh, Jeff. Um, on Elijah Fire, they did a long program just a few days ago, which I uh, recommend a lot. But there's this whole focus on justice, and the Lord has always had my kids and the names he's given them and their ages. There's really a real correlation be between that and things he's doing. So we just hit this um, this thing of justice. Interestingly enough, at the same time today, it gets announced that um, whether mean, the actual head or the symbolic, or the actual head of what we would say the world cabal. When we, what, someone that we, without question, would consider probably one of the wickedest people on the planet. Is that fair to say? Yes, um, and just for what he what he runs, and then there's all these things that he's involved in, and that he's been key for advancing and developing over the last multiple decades. But it is significant um, that we're right now. We're it's. This this focus on justice and why the Lord's even saying my justice will now go from trickle to cascade that I'm going to read in 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 just a, in just a moment. But um, just now, if that chart will be uh, put up that showed 2020 and 2024, you'll have to read that because uh, it's pretty small. I can't even read it from here hardly. So you sure? Well, and I'll tell you, I'm not going to tell you all. And I'll have to say, I got this from. I don't know. I don't. Think he put it together, but I'll ha I'll give credit as far as I know. Derek Johnson, I did see it on uh, on one of his, uh, I think, is a Truth Social post that he had, and he says, "Want to see a glitch in the matrix?" And so these are repeat things from 2020 and 2024, kind of making the point I'm telling you right now. So in 2020, we already addressed this in our Super Bowl word that the Chiefs and the 49ers were in the Super Bowl. Um, uh, both years and the Chiefs won both years. Lamar Jackson, the quarterback of the Ravens, won the MVP in 2020. Um, and I think he did already 2024. Um, so they put his favorite one. Ravens won the AFC North. Ravens won the AFC North. Texas wins AFC South with 10 wins. Texans win AFC South with 10 wins. Chiefs win AFC West. They did the same thing. So you go down. All these things, the Chargers were last, and that happened then. Washington was last in NFC. Panthers last in the NFC South. 49ers win the West. They won the West. You go down Dude. all that. I haven't checked them all out, but it's like, oh, my goodness, down to apparently this one I haven't checked, and so hopefully it's correct. Billy Eilish won Song of the Year. Billy Eilish won Song of the Year. Dude. And then it goes into hockey. It goes into baseball. It goes into basketball. Um, the number one seed wins college football playoff. It happened this way uh, as well. Down to a surgery by Joel Embiid, um, center for Philadelphia NBA team. Uh, he has surgery to repair left hand, and it was he has surgery to repair left knee. Slight wow. differentiation, but it's just wow. like the winner of the Citrus Bowl scores thirty five points. It's like I don't know who did the the homework on this, but it like they um, making the point I'm making and 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 more. So. Um, yeah, you can uh, remove that at any time or people can look at it a second more while I'm talking about it. But there's something about a repeat um, of 2020. And again, it's, I want to make this part clear is this is not because God couldn't get it done in 2020 any more than he couldn't get it done with Pharaoh. There is some aspect of um, him needing the work to be delayed, I think maybe a year ago. I, I, some months ago, Steve, I was saying like it would have been too quick. There is a, like if we had got it when we wanted all the re results and like the work hadn't gone deep enough yeah. in order for it to be where it needed to go. And so but there's something there's something happening now. And so um, just part of my daughter, Justice, and her story as well, her, her turning 30 and which is the age of, of maturity. She, uh, you know, birthday's the 24th, and this is 24, year 2024. And um, we know Psalms 24 has about the King of Glory coming in. And she was named Justice, Justice Hope, because we were in the middle of one of those situations we told you about. Well, the main one where 
we were even we were sued by a church. I confronted the bishop of the church for and I had 10 signed affidavits by women who had been um, either by him or one of his pastors or leaders. And um, so I confronted with them. And so um, we found ourselves. It was in the front of the Atlanta Journal Constitution newspaper wow. sued for twenty four million dollars. And so. And justice was born the 24th kind of in. So we have this whole thing with 24, 24, wow. 24, 24. And so I'm feeling it even in my spirit. And I'm, I think I'm able to get that across to you all. What's what's going on. There is this this repeat. And you're like, yeah, why are we waiting? It should have happened. Well, it, it it's it, it's redo, but not just redoing. It's like it's gone. It's gone another level deeper and it's extracting things that were more embedded because there were things that weren't revealed four years ago. If we had accomplished everything we thought was we were supposed to accomplish and seen the, we'll say the, the justice um, reveal at the level that we wanted in, in 20, um, we have a whole, um, uh, we have a number of additional characters to add to the mix now that we didn't have four years ago, including many things in the church and many things in spirit-filled churchdom. And so there was a need for this thing to go down deeper. And though there was an opportunity for, I'll just say the cabal and the deep state, the black cats, there was an opportunity. And I believe they were clearly offered, we'll say their way out, their exit. Will you bow kind of deal? Just like Pharaoh was, will you bow? Will you let my people go? And they decided they're not going to let the people go. And so they are now facing... A, a, a much deeper consequence. So I'm going to read Steve right now, yeah. just the word I wrote. And I, as you know, I rarely, I rarely do this, but this is, this is what I go, what I got from the Lord. My justice will now go from trickle to cascade for the time has come for my shaking of the nations to be the headline news of the day. Distractions and False flag events will not be able to derail my show of justice. Desperate pleas and deal making will not stop it. <clears throat> Time's up, Luciferians. Time's up, worshipers of Baal. Time's up, you fall on the rock quickly. Perhaps your crushing can be lessened. For, for you who are the in-betweeners, you who halt between two opinions, mm. time's, time's up. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose today for what is good and what is right, or the choice has been made for you by your default. All Judases, you will no longer be able to hide. Mm. No longer able to pretend. Time's up. The escalation of my justice is now released. It is now going to target and pursue you like you've never seen. If you manage to sidestep the trickle of justice that had already been released, you will not sidestep what I am now sending. This is a cascade of justice. For you, the unrepentant, this is even a torrent of justice. You are about to lose everything. You will lose your wealth. You will lose your health. You will lose everything that you have valued. You will be ashamed of believing your satanic rites and rituals would save you. Not only will they not save you, they will place a big target on your back that you can't remove. Your demons and your witchcraft will offer you no protection for what is coming to you. Your hiding places are a joke to me, says the Lord. Your bunkers, your elaborate methods of invisibility are a source of laughter to me, says the Lord. I see you and I will target you and you will know it is me who has put my finger on you. You may think you have dodged justice coming to your house. But you have only dodged the trickle. Now comes the cascade. Now comes the torrent. Justice at another level is here. Wow. 
Yeah, that's an intense word. I believe it too. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I am intrigued that you did leave that one little door open that quickly repent. Maybe your crushing will be less. That was a little tiny bit of hope if someone's caught. It's it's that thing of our God that mercy is always looking to triumph over justice. Hmm. Scripture tells us mercy triumphs over justice, but it we've learned what we've been trying to share over the last few years is just changed the concept for many of the body of Christ. They're like, no, 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 we don't want to plead for justice. We want to plead for mercy. It's like, no, justice is God's mercy on the abused. And so that is what cannot be stopped now. So justice is God's mercy on the abused. Think practically those, those being mm. abused and mistreated. How can you have mercy on them without there being judgment on those who are bringing the abuse to them? So we want to be champions of his justice. We want, we want that. But in that, he's, there's a, a last second proviso. It's like quickly fall on the rock. The scripture talks about fall on the rock before the rock crushes you. And that's really the word for those, um, particularly those who are hesitating. They're in the they're weighing their 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 people not operating out of authenticity in their heart. They're like, who's going to win this or not? And they're 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 keeping, uh, they're straddling the fence. They're keeping a foot in each camp. One's clearly evil. One's the side of good. And and there's just a, a handful out there, a relative handful that even this word applies to, that you have just a briefest moment imaginable. And the moment gets brief, brief, more brief upon you hearing this word. It demands virtual instant uh, obedience in order for the rock not to come crushing on you. But there is a need. I'm just feeling the Lord right now. You know, there's, um, there's talk of the plan and who's got the plan and white hats and black hats. Yeah. What the Lord wants not to be missed from this is yeah. it, it, the black hats, it's not the white hats you need to fear. They are instruments that the Lord is using and will use. But should they all fail, he's not going to fail. He is targeting you. You, you are not going to get away with doing what you've been doing. It's time's up. Time's up. And, and justice is maturing at another level and it's and it's um uh, and it's going to be good for all the rest of us this is a good thing it's intense yeah. but for those who are on the dark side working clearly in alignment and alliance and allegiance with the enemy with the luciferians um it's bad time and for those who are you're in and out you're in and out um, you've taken money. I feel like there's somebody watching right now, at least one. You're literally taking money from both sides and you have a significant role. And that must stop today. That must stop today. When you so, say, can you can you clarify t taking money from both sides for, for what, what 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 are you describing? I'm talking about you're taking it. For, if you want to say black hats and white hats, you are. um you're, you're serving both sides. You're getting away with it. I don't know if one side or both sides don't know you're doing that, hmm. that you're, you're literally, um, you're making moves and you're advancing and, and you're doing your part to align with evil. And then you're also doing some things that makes it look like you're doing with, with good. Uh, the, the, the reality is when you're doing evil and good, you are evil. Yeah. So you don't get credit for being 50% good. Mm. You're using that just to be a deceiver. And so anyway. Can I, I, I ask you a question about that, right? Kind of like in that vein, if you are a person, I, this is a question more than a statement. If you're a person that has done very wicked things, but you've never worked hard, and it never came to light, and you think you've gotten away with it because no one even knows anymore. There's no trail. What I'm hearing you say is God knows it all. Are you saying that if they don't repent, 
that it's as if they're still doing it? What, what, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what would you well, say? Well, I just go back to what uh, it comes back to me by memory. I just wrote it this morning is like my targets on your back. You're not getting away. Yeah. It's like, and there was a particular word that he had me. He, he says, your bunkers, your elaborate methods of invisibility are a source of laughter to me. Hmm. I don't even know what inner conversation some have had. And like the word, like there's like bragging. I'm hearing we're literally invisible. They can't see us. And the Lord is laughing and saying, you're not invisible. He sees you and you're targeted and he's targeting you. And it doesn't matter if you think you have something that can evade what capabilities yeah. the white hats or the good guys have. You do not have, you do not have what is capable to evade from what he has coming your way. So justice, justice, justice. Let that be released. Yeah. I so, think there was I think there was yeah. a, I'll just there was a quote, I think it was attributed to Trump a few months back, and he was taunting the enemy on the other side, and he said, We can hear you breathing. We've got it all. We, you know, but if if that is true, and I think in many cases it's true, they actually literally can hear you breathe. That's how their surveillance is how much more. Can God himself hear you breathing in the thoughts in your head, right? Yes. And there is, I'm just, there is a, and I can just kind of see it in the spirit right now. There is definitely a direct chain between what the Lord is doing and releasing and him working with those who are contending for righteousness hmm. and more directly contending for freedom more directly. Um, they probably do have, um, that technology. And so, um, and, and I'm, I'm, I think the Lord's given them advanced, very advanced technology um, to um, be able to do away with this mafia. Cause that was the promise the Lord that's like five years ago. He shows me I'm removing the mafia and it was the top of the seven mountains. He was removing it all. And, um, and so I, I, that's the thing I know he's doing. You know, conversations we get into is like, okay, what are the white hats up to? How are they feeling good about the plan? Are the black hats good at feeling good ab about it? Well, whatever is going on at that level, from one level up, um, he is saying he's got this one and he's going to see it through. That's I'm hearing the Lord say, I'm going to finish what I told you. The mafia is going to be removed, and it is this central banking. Luciferian um, cult that is going to be removed on everyone who's part of that. Everyone who's been involved in those deeds, you're going to be removed. And, and um, he's like, you have no idea of the bunkers I have work and go 10 miles underground. We, we have it, it. I'm telling you, he's literally laughing at you right now. You cannot get away. You are targeted. You're not getting away. And so um, this is a word so to good. he. He runs the world. He rules. And he's, yes, he has instruments. President Trump has been, continues to be a Cyrus. He's got a whole operation that he is resourcing and that he's empowering uh, besides that. Because he always does use people. He uses yeah. people. He doesn't have to. I say he always it will say 99.99% of the time. He did send an angel to take out 185,000 um, during the days of the book of Kings. Um, there was an angel that came in the night. Elisha, is, it coincided with Elijah prophesying the intervention of the Lord into a famine in the land. And so the angel of the Lord went and took out 180, one angel took out 185,000 Assyrians in one night. So, um, he always yeah. has that as his disposition. And, yeah. and so it's not even it's not even that he's only able to use humans. That's just he chooses in general to do that. But he sure can. We know and it just comes to me more when the children of Israel were defeating the enemy. He was throwing hailstones from heaven. Those are direct. He can throw direct lightning bolts at you. He can throw hailstones from heaven. He can send an angel to take you. It just needs one of his angels. And so this is this is not there's no escaping from an edict of justice from the Lord. So we stayed on that just yeah. a little bit. So good. Right. Uh, do you have any more? Did, I have some a couple of questions, but any 
Yeah, let me. Uh, I'm almost um, okay. Good. Done. <clears throat> so, I want to just point out is that you know, and I know there's so so much coming out in the news right now that is showing um, awakenings uh, taking place all around the globe. I think at least 20 nations, their farmers, are have absolutely um, revolted because really the deep state is trying their viability and have us all eaten bugs in the process of it. And so they are working with each other. They're doing things in, in, um, in France, such as loading up their uh, trucks with manure and throwing them on the politician's house and then building, <laughs> building brick walls around it. Um, wow. And I'm sure you're not, if you're follow the, the main quote, mainstream media, you won't see any of this um, yet soon. We're going to see that. And we're probably seeing some of that by mainstream media because there is there is um, an adjustment taking place in some of those at some level as well. But then the other thing, uh, Steve, is in the last few days, we heard that Jamie Dimon um, of he's a CEO of J.P. Morgan. He just, I guess, cashed out $150 million of his investment in his bank. And um, there's a whole a bunch of, uh, of these things taking place. The Waltons, it was announced, I think just today, $1.5 billion each of cashing out their Walmart shares wow. stock and Bezos, Jeff Bezos, uh, a ton, um, I think is in the billions as well, multiple billions uh, um, from Amazon. Zuckerberg with Facebook. So you have shares of Facebook, Amazon, Walmart, JP Morgan, and the people at the top divesting themselves. What's going on? So a whole new system is coming. Part of the just the justice of God is never complete um, without it having addressed the economic. Uh, when, particularly when we're talking at a corporate level, that's a whole lot of the whole Egypt um, coming out of Egypt is they were the oppression, the limitation on provision that they were subjected to had been broken. And so that's being broken. That's happening. That's happening. Whatever timetable resistance the enemy is still able to pull off it. This is telling you when their guys, when, when people in high places are divesting themselves of their shares. Um, I don't, there, it's just a sign of something. So yeah. I'll leave that alone, Steve, and let you go to the question. Well, right. I mean, if they're, if they're doing that, I don't know where that cash is going once they get it. They probably quickly put it into gold or something, but they know something's coming. In case Johnny's not being clear, what do they know that we don't know? And what should you do knowing that, that they're trying to run for the hills, basically cash out the, their money and probably skip town, so to speak, if not literally, but um, probably important yeah. to... Um, I want to ask you a couple things on the, you know, of course, the subject of today wasn't the in vitro fertilization per se, but when that subject comes up, I don't perceive God as being upset or mad or angry at anybody for how they performed with those and, and put those things, uh, even multiple embryos frozen. God's not upset, but it reminds me of looking at it as it's wise for us to relook at ourselves and what we're doing because. I remember when in 1979 or 1980, my uh, we hadn't had our first child yet, and I was totally pro-choice. So was my wife, Dream. We were Christians through and through, but we were totally pro-choice. No one ever explained it to me. And one day she came home with a little statuette like this of a little embryo of a baby with all of 10 toes and 10 fingers. She had just been to a pro-life event with the women, and I said, are you saying that's what it looks like? That's what a baby is when it's that small? And she said, yeah, that's what they're showing. I, said, I was instantly pro-life and have been ever since. But if, even with that, from that time, it was either 79 or 80, from that time to this, but even during the, we, during the time we had then three children eventually, and in the middle of that, we, we used the IUDs. And I, I can only speak to what they said about the 1970s IUD that, Purportedly, it it actually we didn't know this at the time. It actually would take a conceived embryo and make it detach and not and not continue to grow. It would just make it abort. I neither of us, being totally pro life, understood that at the time. 
And so I mean, we even have a question, man, are we going to have a bunch of kids up in heaven? Um, I kind of suspect we might because of that. Um, but what, I mean, what are your thoughts about that? And people are saying, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this IVF because of what's being said. Any, any other thoughts on that? Well, I agree. I think we will find that we have, there's no downside to that. It's only a positive and upside is that there will be um, a lot of, um, I won't, I won't call them still little ones. Well, I, they, they may be that we've heard by those gone to heaven that they yeah. are kept, might be kept little for us yeah. going there. But that's unfortunately the nature of the lying that's been done to us uh, has us doing things that with no intent, evil intent of our own, yeah. um, we find ourselves having, um, you know, done these type of things. And I remember, yeah, in my 20s, you know, I didn't have an I, I didn't really understand the abortion issue because it was called uh, viable tissue or non-viable tissue. Right. So That's I'm right. thinking, OK, there's sort of like this, yeah, tissue. And then it eventually forms into something. And then, like you said, the game changer that it is when you find that almost instantly you've got a little you're like the first time I saw the evidence of the little person, it's the same. I was like, wait a minute, that's not just viable or non-viable tissue, but that's part of the lying they've done to us. And, and they've done a lot of things actually to cause us to participate. They've tried to defile yeah. us through lying to us about a lot of things. I won't go into some other things um, um, right now, but um, I don't know <clears throat> it, it if the second part of what you're you're saying, um, I know the first part is, yeah, I agree. We, I think we're going to find out that there, you know, there's obviously just people who've had miscarriages that didn't know for sure that that's what happened. And I believe you will, you will find you, you have populated, further populated heaven yeah. with that. But what was the second part you're asking? I feel like I didn't really answer. Well, uh, no, you did more or less, but I was, I'm trying to th paint the big picture that there's, a lot of us did a lot of things innocently, and God is not upset about that at all. Um, but I do think it's possible that even with what you said today, that God is going to be asking people to take a closer look and, and examine not your hearts, because your hearts are great. But did you accidentally, um, now did you create, um, viable might not be the right word, life that's now going to sit there frozen, you know. I agree. It's a whole new I, yeah. I'm in a new place with it too. I, yeah. I hadn't, um, yeah, I'm aware of Christian believers and friends that, you know, they're desperately to want children. And that's yeah. what President Trump was speaking into just yesterday, I guess, is like, no, we want people to keep doing that. To, it's only good to have babies in life. And it is. Yeah. But if if the point is correct, which it has to be, that life has happened and started there and it happened in a tube despite uh you never thinking it could happen there well it's in a womb but if it did wherever life happens you have to respect it as if it's a per well that's the ruling it's a person yeah. now a, a, a fertilized embryo once you have allowed an embryo to be fertilized you have initiated one of the processes of god Crazy, in yeah. procreation and so you have to uh, think through the ramifications of that and so again just quickly it's like okay so if you were you're in there's probably couples in discussion right now and they're like well we want to try to fertilize five of them and theoretically they could all um you know be viable but we'll only choose one and the rest will let go well let go you can't do that now now it if all five happen to take, they now they have to at least be made available for adoption or something is is my my quick answer on that. But it's part of this progressive awakening to realities and what we got to do with it. Yeah, we have to be more awake. And, you know, judgment begins at the house of God. And I again at that, it's like judgment doesn't mean God's mad at you. He's going to in every oh, no, case. No, no, it no. just means decisions and choices by God. Uh, begin at the house of God. He considers the church first. He makes decisions first for the church and then moves out to society. But, you know, so anyway, really interesting. on this uh, whole NAR thing, New Apostolic 
Reformation is what that's supposed to stand for. Probably three years ago, someone started saying, well, you're this, Steve, and Johnny's this, and your whole movement's this. And I said, what is that? What is what is new apostolic? I'm, I'm that, but I don't even never even heard the term before. And then we'll come to find out you were accused of the same thing. And I'm going, so I'm just asking you to kind of double down on your description that new apostolic is people that want to come over and take control of the seven mountains. And that is not what you have ever preached. Is that correct? Well, that's correct. But I'm not even saying the new apostolic reformation is that. That's sort of the branding they're giving it. Oh, I see. Okay. That's okay. the sinister branding they're giving it. And there okay. may be some that are wording it wrong. We're going to take over. We're not going to let these heathens rule anymore. And that's just not, you know, the, the Genesis 1 um, assignment, if you want to look at the dominion mandate, as some will call it, was not over people. It was over every creeping thing, every crawling. It's stewardship and it's participation. It means be salt and light. And you got to you got to participate when the process of things going in the right direction. But at no time, no place did it say have, um, uh, you know, be like a reversal of Pharaoh. It's like, OK, he used to run us, but now we get to run them. That's that's not it. It wasn't you know, it's that was already tried with the Holy Inquisition. And, yeah. and, and the kingdom of God cannot be advanced through imposition. So whoever's still carrying that language in your understanding of uh, new apostolic reformation, please eliminate it. But where it's correct, apostolic reformation is it is a jump from um, the recently default doctrine of we're just waiting for the rapture. We're just waiting for Jesus. Meanwhile, everything needs to get worse and worse. And honestly, the people who are the watchdogs for watching all the NAR spokespeople, they're the ones that are committed to that do nothingness and or in the do nothingness it's like no just get somebody else saved but don't participate in the healing of society be like j vernon mcgee says that's just polishing the brass so they're mad at those polishing the brass trying to make things better and so they're trying to brand us and um and like i usually have to even ask you what does it stand for steve and so i just recently yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get branded and accused of something to make them feel better about the fact that they're actually doing things that will get them. Uh, once they face the judgment seat, see, the Lord will say, what did you do with your talents? Yeah. Well, we buried it because we thought you're coming any moment. Yeah. You know, the five, two and one, the five, two and one talents are the ones that did something with it. And that's yeah. the mandate. We'll say the mandate, the NAR a properly understood is the occupy mandate. He said, occupy till I return. Even Jesus doesn't know. The son doesn't know when he's coming. He didn't say you get to speculate that you get to uh, sell books and make millions yeah. of dollars speculating on when Jesus is coming. And so literally the attack is coming from the speculators on his return on those who say, Hey, I need to be salt and light. I need to participate with the process. I need to be a good citizen. Yeah. I need to be engaged with what's going on in society, or it's going to degrade. And they've managed to make that sinister, or even within the church, people, oh, no, he's just, that's just NAR. Um, now, if you want to be mad at, at certain how they have overemphasized apostle and prophet, and and there's been arrogance, that's, that's fine. But the NAR, the essence of it, from, I think it's, this is really initiated from Peter Wagner, was not him trying to advance a bunch of titles and a bunch of entitlement and a bunch of we're going to suppress you know, people. It's like we have to be a part like of what Jesus said. I will build my church yeah. and the gates of hell. Let's just stay with that one real quick. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So if the church is not actively looking to engage with the gates of hell, and bring light to that darkness, then you are in some less than um, valuable, and I could say a worse word than that, but it's less yeah. than valuable level of Christianity. It's yeah. a defaulting Christianity. It's, a, it's the equivalent of bearing the talent he gave you or made you to be. And just because you can throw stones from that place, like you're bearing your talent, you're going to do nothing, you're going to engage in nothing, but you're going to throw stones at those who say, no, we have to engage. We have to resist. If he calls us light, it means light must go after the darkness. Yeah. 
And so that is just so basic to uh, scripture, Christianity, Jesus messaging to us. I don't know how uh, the attackers even get away with it anymore. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all right. right. Well, and those that are watching, of course, now I'm speaking specifically of Elijah's dreams. You've seen us because Johnny's preached um, comp nonstop in a good way. You're the light. You're the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are these things. Well, so when we when we take that money and invest it in fresh water wells from people on the earth who have no fresh water, and then at the same time we are doing the kindness of God to the poor, people come to us and say like I, they they when we did this water dedication they said those that want to get saved raise their hands and then uh, they didn't all raise their hand but they were excited about what we did and one gentleman edward was his name came up and i said how can i pray for you and he said i want to get saved why do you want to get saved because he saw he saw us being salt and light and so i'm not like patting us on the back Exactly, but I am pointing out that that's kind of what God's talking about, doing things on the earth that bring salt to the areas that need salt and light, right? I mean, 100%. And that's, there's so many other works that they don't, people don't know that you yeah. all go into of these type of things, kingdom advancement. And and again, um, some of the NAR uh, attacks and criticism may be earned because there is an aspect of it that was just like, way overselling the titles of apostle and prophet and and so yeah. we like just had way too much luggage and baggage just throw it all that's why i don't need uh, i not only do i don't need i never use it in a yeah. or <laughs> and never have at yeah. all it's not it's like it has to be somebody who's mad at us for uh, for something like that. Okay. So that's supposed to be some, um, something sinister that we're involved in. What? Like they just, they're just, no, that's NAR. Well, what is it? Oh, it's just NAR. Well, what? Well, I mean, that's, um, that's NAR. And the, 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 the fastest <laughs> thing they say is that, oh, they're trying to take over the world. It's like, who, who has said that? Uh, and, they're, and whoever's saying it, stop it. You know, yeah. we are saying that, yeah, darkness and evil is to be challenged. Yeah. So, if you bring that down. So wherever you are, if you're a non NAR, if someone comes to your house, if you don't resist, then, you know, uh, that you see how horrible that is. A resistor of evil does not make someone dastardly NAR. OK, I, I yeah. don't it's we, not, we, and, and we I won't say what we were trying to name, but we were trying to name something a week or two ago. A building that we're going to get, and someone, a couple of people came up with the apostolic something, and I said, "No, I don't want to use apostolic. Nobody knows what that is. We don't know what it is. The public doesn't know what does it mean to be apostolic." And I remember going to church oh, 20 years ago, and people that were, and, and that was the big question. I think Bob Jones was there at the time, and he was saying the same thing. Nobody knows what that is. Nobody knows what that means. Now, there's people that I've even had on this program that label themselves as apostles, that that's okay. They can do that. I just don't know how that's different from pastor or prophet that are out and about speaking and, and speaking and, 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 and praying for the sick and prophesying. It kind of all looks like the same thing. John Wimmer had a, had a, a, a version to all that too. And he says, for instance, an elder, Everyone wants to be called an elder. An elder is someone who elds, he would say. In other words, whoever is doing something, a pastor is someone who pastors. I don't know exactly what an apostle is. Um, maybe it's a missionary, but I, anything else you want? To add? Well, I have. Oh, I believe an apostle is something, but it's it, Paul. You know, all the all the apostles in the scripture, we call them the apostle Paul, the apostle John. Right. They never did. It's Paul and apostle. It was a description of what he did. So literally, you shouldn't be able to even get away with calling yourself apostle or apostolic unless you understand that the word apostle was about those bringing the culture. So uh, and I'll just briefly say that apostolio is the Greek word that was used, never used in a spiritual context. When Jesus said, I'll build my church on apostles and prophets, apostles were within the Roman um, army, those that were when they had 
defeated a city and brought them into Rome. Rome kept having trouble with rebellions that would flare back up later. And it's because the people had their own their own roads and they had their own money. They had their own holidays and they had their own everything. So they they found out that the only way to make Rome culture stick is they had to send the culture, uh, the culture generals. And that's what a, an apostle was. Oh, really? I never heard that teaching before. That's oh, yeah. really interesting. So the apostolia would come and he would say that those holidays are no longer holidays. These are now the holidays. We are now bringing in our roads in here, you know, the famous Roman roads, and you will now use Roman coins. And so they culturified the place. And in doing so, then that's how they were able to retain them in general. For So on a good way, you think in the kingdom, it's like there is a kingdom culture that you bring, which is his way of doing things. It's not impositional in the way the Romans would do, but it's not just that he, it's a transaction to get saved. That's what connects 100% with our seven mountain message, seven mountain mandate is there's a way of doing things. There's a way he runs government and it's not through imposition. It is through service. There's a way he runs media and that's in communicating uh, good news, encouraging news, healthy news. So the way, the good way of doing the culture, the kingdom culture way of doing things is what we must be advancing. And so Okay. Anybody who uses terminology apostle apostolic is supposed to understand that. Um, but unfortunately, we're using it a lot as a I'm an apostle uh, um, um, kind of deal, you know, just stuff that. Yeah. And so, that, yeah. And, and so I can think of at least two or three people we've had on that call themselves apostles. We don't show them the door. They're fine. They can call themselves, you know, I, I'm just. There is legitimate for, usage for it, but it's yeah. so. It's so bad, as you're saying. What happens is it's misused so much you don't want to use it anymore. It's, it's, yeah. it, it, but you know. Yeah, that's good. Well, it's good to even just think about it and talk about it. So we look, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. There's the big one right there. But all right, really, really good stuff, Johnny. Do you want to feel like praying for the people and blessing them as we close this out? Yeah. And Steve, if I can just mention one more time yes. as, as we're leaving this. Um, um, the multiplication factor we announced last week, 16 truths about partnering with God in business and life. And if you'll see forward in conclusion by Johnny, and you know, I essentially wrote what, at one time we called it the first chapter and the last chapter, but been hearing so many great reports. This instantly sold out. So really? it's in, um, at Amazon, so they don't keep enough there. And so uh, try again, because they do as they sell out, but then they replenish. They, it's just their systems, the way they, they refuse to put in. Um, uh, you know, thousands and they put hundreds instead. And so th then it doesn't have enough there. But we want you to wear that. It's really the, Mark Walker, his testimony, him and Pam about partnering with God in business. My own father-in-law uh, last night, uh, we were uh, having dinner with them and he was reading to me his comments. He and, and my mother-in-law went through Mark Walker's uh, book and they're friends. They know each other, but it was like, Oh, my goodness, if I'd have had that years ago about how to practically partner with God. And he says, Mark's points are so powerful. And it's like i have not heard them anyway. So I'm interested in those, particularly those of you who have received the confirmations that you're called to be, we'll say, ministers of wealth, billionaires, the kingdom, uh, Isaiah 61 army that's going to be a part of rebuilding ruined cities and generations and like how to really partner with God. And, and it starts when you don't have that much. You don't have to be dirt poor right now, but he did start when he's dirt poor. There's God looks at the measure of intent that you have from your heart in order to be generous. And we, um, as pastors, we saw many of them. As soon as I get my breakthrough, I'm going to be generous. Generosity starts wherever you're at. We'll just put and, it that and way. And this is the gentleman that's a furniture uh, that yes. did the furniture. And I met him in uh, in band about three years ago. It was when we were all there together, yes. all of us. Yes. And I was saying to him, thinking, I, I was just making conversation. I was saying, you know, we started with 10% and then we give 20%. And now we're up to, I think it was climbing up to, I'm talking about personally give because it was, Something in our conversation made me feel open yeah. to say that. And he said, well, we give 50% away, and, and I wish I could give more. And I'm thinking, oh, no, that's my kind of guy. In fact, I remember now, since that's who it is, I got to get that book. Because I'm. it's not like I need to have someone convince me to give more. 
Yeah. Because I already, but I want someone to give but me the principles generous. and how to make it. I was telling the Lord this morning because he has a lot of money coming to us uh, through us. And I was just saying, well, Lord, show me how to multiply. I didn't even think about this book this morning. I was yeah. saying, show me how to multiply, even if it's way more than we need. Show us how to multiply so that having sufficiency and everything, we have more than enough to give to others beyond, you know, all of that. So. And we've told you, that's why we're recommending we're not, he doesn't need the sales. In fact, he's like, Johnny, I don't want to make uh, anything from it. And so he's actually, he's steering it, all of it towards our South American uh, missions, having nice. to do with government reaching. And so 100% is going there. It's not going to us. It's going for that part of the, the ministry. So there's no point. There's not book selling for the sake of book selling or anything. But I want to keep bringing it up because it's Good. so valuable for you yeah. who are on that path of, be, of being um, like Steve saying ministers of wealth and want to know uh, keys to better steward and how to yeah. expand. And so that's that's what we recommend. Anyway. Really, really good. All right. Go so ahead, I'll yeah. pray. Lord, we just thank you for this time together. Mm. Lord, I just agree with you in this moment of prayer and those who are listening with me. Let your justice let the cascade of justice come yes, now. Let the torrent of justice come now, Lord. Let your compassion and mercy on those who have been harmed and abused and damaged in every way. And there's at all kinds of levels in our nation and in the nations around the world. Let the angels of justice be released. Let the great angels of justice be released into our midst, into the nations, Lord. Let your uh, uh, the conclusion of the elimination of this mafia that you promised, Lord, we just ask that that would be um, that that would begin to be. We're just agreeing with your acceleration of that taking place right now on planet Earth, Lord. Your sons and daughters who are listening right now, let them sense and feel your encouragement at this time, Lord. Even through the word on justice, but through everything else uh, you're saying, and and Lord, let even just sparks and of of hope be ignited in your sons and daughters, Lord, new dreams, new visions, new encounters with you that speak into where we're going into this new era, the era of the kingdom of God made manifest on earth like never before. Yes, we thank you. This is what you have spoken and determined for us. And this is a narrative. I will speak Lord in obedience to you because this is the one you insist that I keep speaking here. Thank you, Lord. Even at this time, I feel to, um, throughout the name of Justice, yeah. uh, Chief Justice Thomas Parker, Lord, yeah. and yes, Lord. You know, there's a, a health consideration with his wife right now. Yes, and I Lord. ask, Lord, that right now, even through our agreement, that you would release your hand of healing to him and specifically to his wife, Lord, for that miracle that's needed right now. Lord, cover him, release new angels around him as he navigates this new season of attention. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Great show today. Thank you, Johnny. Give our love to Elizabeth. We'll yes. see you in a few days when I'm out there in your neck of the woods. And a uh, reminder that Dr. Jen Halper Hayes will be with us in the morning. So don't miss that. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll see you later. Bye bye.